that's the breakdown of the uh, the actual diagram itself. Now, the purpose of the diagram is to explain turning between each of these directions. Firstly, uh, footwork in general in my model. If you are facing an east-west coordinate, regardless of whether you're on the same direction or opposite direction matrix, if you are facing an east-west coordinate, the T stance is generally, there are exceptions, generally the recommended stance. So this is the T stance that would allow me to turn to the left. This is the T stance that would allow me to turn to the right. Now, when I say T stance, I mean my right foot is forward, pointing toward east, and my left foot is pointing toward north. I can do the other T stance where my left foot is facing east, and my right foot is facing south. This would allow me to pivot to my right because you, the rule is you always pivot in the direction of your back foot. Boom, 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 boom. Now in general, in poi, in my experience, there's more side to side pivoting than there is front to back pivoting. Front to back pivoting is accomplished through this step turn where you anchor on one foot and rotate 180 degrees. So it's more common to see, just taking beginner moves, going from an overhand weave to an underhand weave than it is to see, in my experience at least, going from a pinwheel to a pinwheel, or a pinwheel to a pinwheel. Uh, the formula for north-south moves is, a V stance, pivoting on one foot. So if I'm, uh, whether or not you pivot on your right foot or left foot depends on whether you're comfortable more with a forward turn or backward turn because you can turn both ways. So for example, I can stay on my right foot and step backward or forward, backward or forward, or stay on my left foot and go backward or forward. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish and it depends on the context, whether you're trying to make a left turn or a right turn. Uh, some things are just harder to do than others. And that's also subjective based on the individual. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't declare universally one is easier than the other. The formula with the V stance is the V is going to be your south and the V is going to be your north and you're going to use the one foot to anchor and turn. If you're moving between an east-west position to a north-south position, you're going to go from the T to the V. If you're moving from the north-south to the east-west, you're going to go from the V to the T. So it's T, V, T, V, T. Now this footwork seems, I'm sure, super detailed and conceptually is maybe not relevant in the early phases and the more complex the moves are, the easier it is to rely on the same footwork. And let me contrast it to uh, how I've seen people do these sorts of things. I normally see people doing their weaves like this, where the weave is expressed with the hip line uh, straight, as opposed to the T stance, where you've already done a quarter of the turn. So if you're here, and you're trying to turn 180 degrees to underhand, you have to turn the full 180 degrees. So I actually had to move my foot and step. Let me contrast that with the T stance. With the T stance, there's no need for me to lift my foot up all the way. I can just pivot rather than step and turn. <laughs> and hit my skirt lock, step and turn. Now there's a lot more work over time Think about this over the course of years, the difference between this versus this. It's also, in my opinion, your mileage may vary, I think this looks less refined than this. This has a more smooth kinesthetic to it. It has a more smooth aesthetic as a result of the smoother kinesthetic. So it looks better because it feels better. Uh, that's my opinion your mileage may vary. Now, if you're super awkward, this may be really hard, and maybe you look really awkward doing this too for some reason. However, I think if you can reduce 
the amount of energy required to turn, that energy can then be transmuted into the expression of the move in a way where you have more style. That's why, okay, and that's why I started in class three. So at the very beginning, my, my perception, based on the old days, this may not be true anymore because there's so many videos out there, but in the old days, the most basic combination that people learned was connecting this low turn to this high turn in what is called chasing the sun. Now, if you notice how I do it here, I'm facing the side in my T stance and I come into the low turn underhand in my T stance on the right side. So I did a 180 degree turn and then I'm gonna do a 180 degree turn up over the head and behind the shoulder back into overhand. So I'm using the T stance when I do this. Now, when people have a hard time getting this connected, which I think is much harder to do than just part one and part two, when people have that challenge, it's easier if you break it down this way. What this also causes to happen though in the learning of this combination is you're teaching them the process of just pivoting, just pivoting. And then ultimately, oh, I'm coming into the V stance where I'm swiveling my body a little bit without actually lifting my feet in order to generate this chasing the sun motion. And this is of course true whether I'm doing it in clockwise which is what you see me doing it in now, or anti-clockwise, which is what you see me doing it in now, even though it looks clockwise to you, the viewer. That, in my experience, is the first combination that people learn, but they don't necessarily think of it as a combination because of the way it's expressed as chasing the sun. Yet, if you start people right there in the beginning with this, and you train them with that, by the time they get to this, they're already trained on that footwork for your weave fountain. Or this, when you get to the wall plane weave fountain, which is the same thing as the chasing the sun 